with the offense, uh, now that you've had two games with Tannehill, what do you want to see maybe uh, see this offense maybe develop or, or, or improve on at this point? Yeah, it, it's, it all comes down to the consistency. I mean, I think that um, going back through the film, you know, it, there's there's really nice plays, really good plays against, uh, you know, run and, and pass against um, a really good run defense. Um, and so we just have to be more consistent. And, you know, we have to try to, to get everybody operating, the play, all 11, the, the quarterback getting us in the right play, the, the line, you know, getting us started on a run or giving us a pocket or protection in a play pass or drop back or screen or you know, keepers or whatever we're doing. You know, receivers running routes and identifying man and zone um, and, and running good routes and then the quarterback being decisive and, and, and operating in, in an efficient manner. But we continue to score touchdowns in the red zone, which has is, which is helped us. The win Kalu, I guess that opens up the window of whether or not you decide to bring him off of our or under the roster. It will not depend on what you see from him this week or what kind of thought process there? Uh, Josh is going to be practicing today. That's all I can tell you. Um, after that, when something else happens, when he goes from being able to practice um, to, to whether being on the active roster or not, um, then we'll try to keep you updated there. What about suck up? He'll be practicing today too. So is he likely to kick, you think, on, on Sunday? I'm sorry? Is he to the point where he's likely to kick uh, this week in a game, you think? Um, you know, I don't want to put any percentages on it, but that's why we're practicing him to evaluate him to see how he feels, um, to see what he looks like, and then make a decision. Is there a scenario where he might be your field goal kicker, but you might have somebody doing kickoffs for him? Um, you know, I don't want to talk about potential scenarios. I think there's a lot of scenarios that we try to work through each and every week. Um, you know, the idea is that we evaluate Ryan. Um, and see where he's at and see what he feels like. And I think that you know, with a lot of, you know, veteran players, it just, you rely on them uh, to, to be honest and truthful on how they feel uh, in order to do their job. I think that's, um, that's something I've always appreciated. It's something that I always try to do um, when you're working your way back from something. And so we'll, we'll continue to talk to Ryan and um, see how he feels. TD scoring percentage. What is behind that? Um, just guys operating uh, efficiently, uh, being decisive with the ball, guys making good plays, um, you know, catching a football. You know, John, who's the pass to John, who was decisive, um, wasn't completely accurate, but the receiver made the quarterback right. Um, the one to AJ, I would say, would would fall under accurate and, and, and a great route and a, and a good catch. Um, the one to Tajay, I would say that was well thrown, and well executed, well caught. Um, you know, going back to um, San Diego, decisive to, to Corey, and you know, just need to continue to, to carry over that consistency and, and decision making and, and the confidence that we have down there to the rest of the, the rest of the field. Decisive like that, I know Pat O'Hara mentioned it yesterday too. Is that just a matter of processing quickly, or is it? I'm sure there's a lot of things involved with with trust, having never played the, the position, but um, trying to to understand it and and, and gain an insight and the help, uh, whether it be the quarterback or receivers, you know, trying to figure out what the other team's job is and how they're attacking you. And you know, is this a team that we see that's going to inch into the end zone? Are they going to undercut you at the end zone? Um, how do they play zone? Um, are they going to play inside leverage man? You know, there's a lot of things that go into it, and so I think there's some decisions that, that have to happen pretty quickly, especially down there um, since we're on the red zone where the, the windows are, are tighter and the area and the space is, is much shorter. Are there times, uh, maybe in, in some of those circumstances, where Corey and AJ still maybe don't get into things fast enough uh, route-wise? What, which, uh, just be more specific, I mean, whatever's on your notes, to just give me the specifics and I'll try to help you through there. I don't want to like misspeak on what you're trying to ask me about. There were, there were at least one play for each of them where it seemed like 
Ryan had already made a decision to throw the ball somewhere else where they hadn't yet finished yeah. doing whatever they needed to do to get to where they needed to be for him that to be an option. Yeah, and I and I do. That's a that's a great question because I think people watch that and, and you can see and I and I even ask that sometimes um, of Pat and and the quarterbacks and Arthur and. You know, as a quarterback, you're going to start one way. There's there's route concepts on either side, and so, you know, you're going to start one way. Um, you know, in this league, it's not come back and just kind of scan it as you know guys are smoking it in there. Um, you you have to have some pre-snap awareness of where you want to start and which side you want to work. Is there a man side? Is the zone side? Um, Isn't it all-purpose coverage beater that you know may work against man or zone? Um, and so sometimes those are yes, no's by the quarterback. The quarterback has a has an opportunity to say, this is where I'm going. I'm going to take a matchup. And um, some of those other instances, I think that you have talked about, that would be if I would progress through um, and I would come back or, um, you know, if we got a different look, still, if that helps. Still a couple of weeks away from the bye, but at the halfway point of the season, uh, how do you find a balance between wanting to get prepared for Sunday, but also trying to watch the healthier team and not uh, overworking guys. I think, um, you know, Jim, that's, you know, that's obviously a veteran, um, you know, sports writer thinking about things because I think about it um, as soon as our game was over. And I know that, you know, we're, 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 we're not operating at 100% and neither is everybody else. And you have to find ways to improve. I talked to the team this morning. And explain to them um, what it looked like at after week eight last year in the National Football League. The teams that were three and five, uh, that finished ten and six. The teams that were five and two, that finished seven and nine. The teams that were three and four, that ended ten and six. Uh, teams that were three and four, um, maybe four and three, that finished twelve and four, like the Chicago Bears. And the ability to improve um, over the course of the season. Uh, today, uh, and, and I think a lot of that has to be through the details. If you're not able to practice at the speed or the tempo that you normally would, giving a healthy, rested, full you know, roster, uh, we, we have to lock in on these details and allow the, the details of the play and what's being asked of me. Um, that's where we have to, f to focus in right now, I think, on today. And is what I talked to him about this morning, is being able to practice um, you know, at a tempo that lets us try to get our bodies back by, by Sunday, but also understand that the, the emphasis and the focus on the details have to be um, off the charts. Enjoy again in practice today? I'm hopeful. What are the keys to defending and I guess slowing down someone in tight end because of Catherine? Uh, it's been, uh, I would say, agonizing and a fun uh, few days to watch um, just how dynamic of a player he is, uh, his quickness, his toughness his ability to, to make people miss in the open field, his, uh, his ability to catch the football. Um, you know, somebody makes up 56% 50 of their touches and 46% of their offense. Um, and you know he's going to get it. You know he's going to run it. You know they're going to throw it to him. And he's still able to be productive. Um, you know, we're going to have to get a lot of people to the ball. We can't throw off in a run game and guess, because when you throw off, uh, he'll just come and he'll wait. Um, he'll be patient, and then he's got a burst to to hit the hole. You know, if if you if you over pursue, he cuts back. If you come in there light on the sidelines, he's gonna you know stiff arm you. So he's got a lot of uh, tools, and, and he uses them very effectively. Is he one of those guys where it's maybe especially important to wrap up, or is there something else going on? With him? Well, I mean, wrapping up, it's like you you got to make sure that you fight through the stiff arm. I would say that. Uh, leaving your feet's not the best idea against a, a runner like this and, and, or any runner in the National Football League because what happens is is when you leave your feet, um, they got a couple choices. They can stiff arm you, which then you belly flop on the ground. Uh, they can cut back and you have nothing, you know, no opportunity. We start hopping. And when our feet are off the ground, as much as we want to make a decision to change direction, we physically can't. Um, and those are all things that we've been working on since – since April, and, and I do think that it's improved. Um, it'll never be great, but 
a, a good good defenses are good tackling defenses, and they're ones that when you see guys, I, I love when you see guys breaking stiff arms downs and guys that stay on their feet. Um, you know, you may even miss them the first time, but you have the ability to come back. And if guys are hustling, um, you have a, the ability to make a tackle, uh, you know, two or three yards later. So um, all those things that we've been working on are going to be uh, critical when, it, when you're talking about McCaffrey. And I would add in more um, Samuel Wright. You know, I know what, 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 what Curtis Samuel is, and I know DJ Moore. I've watched those guys, and, um, you know, they're all kind of in the same mold. I mean, they all essentially carry the football at or near the line of scrimmage in college um, in, in space. And that's what, that's what they were recruited for. And now they're developing into to NFL receivers, but with, with that same skill set of um, you know, being a, a, a slot running back, a, you know, Percy Harvin, however many years ago. But these guys, you know, they got a lot of juice you know, underneath when they catch the football. I, again, I've never, nobody ever told me how long I was supposed to hang out there and congratulate the other coach and thank them or whatever I'm supposed to do. I just try to be respectful and um, say good game either way. Um, one of us isn't probably very happy. So to sit there and I'm, I know I'm going to work my way to that. That's the first thing that you asked about. And I'm trying to get to the, to the end of the answer is just, um, I feel like guys put a lot of effort in. Um, I'm, I try to have a relationship with everybody on this team that helps us throughout the week. I understand how hard it is um, sometimes out there in the game, win or lose. I just want to thank them for their effort, check in on them. It's my first chance to really see, you know, how guys are. And I know, I mean, you see some guys coming up that tunnel that are, um, you know, they're battered. I mean, they're coming off of a, a game of three and a half hours or physical contest. Um, you know, and you just kind of first my first chance to be able to check in with with each of them and thank them for their effort. Why did you think the week helped Delaney last week? Well, I think it helped. I think he's he's progressing. You know, we'll see where he's at. Um, you know, and his availability for this week that'll probably take place here in the next couple of days, more so tomorrow than what are today. What's made the uh, Panthers pass rush so effective? Sorry, JB. Good players. Know, good players, tight coverage, 50, 50 quarterback hits, 30 sacks. Uh, I think the thing that's most impressive is that it's not just, you know, one or two guys. It's it's a group effort that they have. Um, they all have the ability to rush. They they rotate them through. Um, you know, Addison and Burns, Irvin. You know, Poe, McCoy. Um, they just they have a lot of guys that that have the ability to to rush and um, rush with great effort and relent relentless effort. Mike, it kind of sounded like you don't expect Delaney to practice today, maybe more so later in the week. Uh, yeah, I probably would imagine that uh, we'll try to get him out there, you know, one whenever he's ready. I don't know if that b that'll be today, but um, you know, we'll have the ability to, to see you know, how he does on third down day, which is normally tomorrow, and then we'll, we'll make a decision on the game. You guys are, again, defensively really strong at keeping uh, the opponent out of scoring position. Is that difficult to replicate year over year with defense being, can't necessarily rely on things like turnovers? You know, I think that uh, th that's the number one objective. Um, you know, you'd like to dominate in, in all phases, you know, the run game, the pass game, third down, how's your short yardage defense, red zone, but but ultimately having the ability to to limit points is going to keep you in every game. You know, we're 10 and 0 when we score 21 points the last two years. Um, you know, so just every week's a new week. Every week's a new challenge. Um, you know, understand that, you know, whatever you may have done in that drive that you didn't really like or wasn't very good. Um, you always have the opportunity to, to make up for it down in the red zone with, with a sack, with a fumble, with tipping a ball. You just you have to just try to forget what what got you down there and and how whatever mistake you made or whatever the quarterback did to get him down there or whatever the runner did and and try to uh, and regroup and, and and play really 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 good uh, red zone defense. That twenty one points <clears throat> like that should be 
e easier to come by? Not not that big a number? Oh, I just was throwing a stat out there. I figured you guys probably already knew it. You guys, you know, I, I, you guys are great at your job, you know. So I just was making a point that, you know, the defense uh, has done a good job limiting points and, and when they haven't, you know, it hasn't been so good.